if you can get Dawkins to give you a ride home, okay? Me and Deborah will probably be talking all night. Right. Two of you don't end up in tears again. We patch things up with her now, okay? If I were you, I would think twice about giving her this. You know how she's gonna take it. It's just a Christmas ornament. All right, Kay, whatever you say. Your sister. You just take it easy on her, okay? I'll see you later. graveyard shift which is killing him not to mention our sex life well at least you've got one this it yeah i'll get it no, i got it i got it so you still got your daycare thing on merry christmas lady merry christmas to you too honey yeah i got about a half dozen kids tearing up the house between seven and four every day oh so you want to go straight over to jolene's or you coming by the house for a while? Well, I think I better go straight over there. I'm two hours late already. Hey, you're a big girl now. Yeah, well, you know how mother gets. She is not our mother. She's our stepmother, okay? Okay, she's all the family I got. Damn it! I'm your family, too, and I'm about half sick of this. I mean, who's always picking you up and taking you over there and then making up the couch when they kick you out again? We're going to spend some time together. We are, but it's almost eight. Now, come on. Get in the car. I got something for you. Yeah, a little boy there. Okay. Merry Christmas, sis. Astrology. This is great, really. I've done my chart in Woody's. Hey, thanks, sis. Mm -hmm. I've got something for you too, but um, well, I, I want you to take it the wrong way, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, Woody says I. Sh oh, I don't know. It's. Uh, it's nothing, really. It's just been... Well, don't tell me what it is. I hate to ruin this. You always did wrap so nice. I just kind of stick things in there, you know, tape them up. What is it? Oh, it's a little ceramic. It's just Christmas ornament. No, it isn't. Deborah, I didn't mean it like that. Yes, you did. You don't think it's hard enough this time of year? You know, just once, I'd like to have a nice Christmas like everyone else. Just once. Now, come on, let's go. You can take me over there right now. I hate Christmas. You want to know the truth? Breaks my heart every damn year. How's Francie, our real mama? The same. Got a new boyfriend, of course. But this one's got all his teeth and a brand new car. Well, he'll be driving a junker before old Francie's through with him. Oh, it's just 
few more miles, honey. Carolyn, you stop that snivelling right now. <laughs> Think it was the end of the world or something. Okay, wipe her nose for her. Oh, here we are. Pull in. Pull in. Give me a big old hug. Oh, what a girl. <laughs> How you doing, Francie? Letty, we can't stay but for a minute. Roy's got to get back to town, so. Debra, come on, get out the car. I want to go with you, Mommy. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't. Now, come on. Get out the car. Debra, come on. Get out the car. Girl, come on. I swear, I don't know what's got into that child. She hasn't been right since they went to see their daddy and his new girlfriend. Oh, Deborah. Oh, you girls, we're gonna have a fine old time. You remember your Aunt Letty? You remember me? Oh. Francie, let's go. Sweet home. Well, Kay, let's not start off like this. I'm sorry, okay? I just... I know, I know. We gonna see each other? Sure. As soon as I get kicked out again. Just do me a favor, okay? And don't fly off the handle or nothing. I need you to find out exactly when Carolyn was born. The exact time. Damn it, Kay. I just want to do her chart. I just want to see what kind of person she might have been. I'm not even getting into this. Why not? Don't you think we owe it to her, Deb? At least to remember her? Hey, I remember her all the time. That's why I'm such a mess. Now let it go. We've been trying that for damn near 40 years, and look at us. Kay, just stop it. It's enough. Okay. Okay. I gotta go. Try and find out for me about Carolyn. Francie says Daddy has her birth certificate. I'll call you. Hey! I'm having a party Friday night. about time you got Sorry. here. all those bruises. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Daddy's girlfriend did. Joanne.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too. I thought you'd be out of here by now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Merry Christmas. 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 Hey, Daddy. What you looking for? My pants. They match this shirt your mother made for me. Ah, here they are. So you finally made it, huh? We was beginning to wonder. Well, you know how the bus is. Oh, they got planes these days, you know. Merry Christmas, honey. Merry Christmas, Daddy. So I hear you were in the hospital. Yeah, real pain in the ass. They say my heart's going bad. Grab my belt, one with the turquoise buckle. <laughs> We're going over to neighbors for a drink. You ought to come. Oh, I don't think so. I, I've been on a bus for eight hours. Daddy? Yeah? You know where Carolyn's birth certificate is? Birth certificate? What do you want that for? Kay wants it. Okay. <laughs> I should have figured. You've been with her all the 15 minutes and you're already starting in on that. Daddy, I'm not starting in on anything. I'm just wondering. Well, don't wonder. You hear me? You two have just about wondered that to death. Especially around here. You about ready for something to eat? Well, I'm not really hungry, but if you fix something. Of course I did. I mean, it would have helped if you got here on time. And what, what's this? I was hanging up your coat and nearly fell out in my hand. Um, it's just an ornament. Kay gave it to me. Oh. Isn't that sweet? Don't blame me if the dumplings are soggy. Come on, Ken. Come on over here with me. Oh, oh. Okay, now. Let's all say grace. Everybody bow your heads. Dear Lord, we thank you for this food you set before us. And we ask that you bless us, Lord, and keep us mindful of the needs of others. I'd also like to say a special prayer for these little girls, Lord. For Kay and Deborah and baby Carolyn. Please watch over. Please watch over them, Lord. They need your help more than most. That's all I ask. Amen. 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 Deborah? Sorry. What's all this about Kay? What you and Butch were talking about. Oh, that's nothing. Uh, Kay and me were just talking about astrology on the way over, and I, I gave her this astrology book, and... Kay was uh, thinking about doing Carolyn's chart. Carolyn. Yeah? I won't have you spoiling my Christmas, Deborah. I'm not. But you are going over there. She's my sister. Your sister's a sick girl, Deborah. Let's just hope it ain't catching.
from there. Okay, you go in the house and get your sister's things. Pooch, they're no trouble at all. I like having them here. That ain't the point, Letty. They're my kids. Okay. You hear Jolene? Girls? Jolene's gonna be your stepmother now. Oh, you shut up! And you get that bed made! What the hell's going on out here? She's just scared, Daddy. She misses Mama. Well, she just better get used to it. Because your Mama ain't coming back. Girls, I want you to call Jolene mother from now on. Why? What about our real Mama? Your real Mama? What, you mean the one who takes you out there and dumps you in the sticks every time she's got a new boyfriend? We like it at Aunt Letty's. Well, you ain't going back there either. Because your real mama's dead. Jolene! That's why we got y'all. And y'all to be grateful, too. <laughs> now you shut that baby up, and you get in that bed. You hear me, Kay? <laughs> That's great. Now what are we gonna tell them when their mama comes back? <laughs> she ain't always gonna be bigger than us. Our mama ain't dead. But let's do a prayer for her. Put your hands like this. Close your eyes, just like we do at Aunt Letty's. Dear God, it's me, Deborah, and Carolyn. We just wanted to ask that if our mama is really dead, could you bring her back for us? We will, we'll be really good and we won't ask for nothing else. That's all we ask. Amen. And we gotta do that every night. Maybe it will come true. Night, Deborah. Night, Carolyn. Night, Matt. Hello? Hey, sis, it's me. I just want to call and say good night. Tell you I love you. I love you too, Deb. I was just lying here thinking the same thing. You find out about Carolyn? No. I don't think I'm going to either. Jolene just gave me that look of hers and Daddy flew off the handle. Well, you ever wonder why? I mean, what's that tell you, Deb? Don't start. That child's dead because of her. Deborah? 
Deborah? Look, I gotta go. It's too tight, I can hardly raise my arm. Well, maybe if you laid off the biscuits and gravy for 10 minutes, I could keep up with you. <laughs> Cook too good. Let's look at these trees over here. Dad, you all right? What happened? Um, nothing. I, I think I'm coming down with something. I'll wait for you in the car. Here you go. Feeling any better? Yeah. That's just a little lightheaded is all. This is about uh, Carolyn, isn't it? Kay got you all stirred up again. No. You can tell me the truth, Deborah. I am. Kay just wants to know when she was born so she could do her chart. I have been very patient about this. And I have not said a word, but if you're going to stand here and lie to my face. Mother. Mother, what did I do? Do you think I'm blind or something? Do you think that I cannot see the way you've been looking at me? Kay's got you brainwashed now. No. Oh, you think I'm some kind of monster. That's not true. Then what is all this about Carolyn and when she was born and all that? And don't, don't tell me that it's Kay wanting to do her astrology. Okay, it's, it, that's not it. But it's not what you think it is either. I'm just curious about Carolyn. All right, you're just curious. It's true. She's my baby sister. I got a right to know about her. It's always been like some big taboo around here. I mean, we're not supposed to talk about her. We don't even have her pictures up anywhere. Jolene, you want this in by the front window? Yeah, it's fine. We're talking about Carolyn. You know why? Because what happened was a terrible, terrible thing. And it's better left in the past. You was only three when it happened. You don't know how we grieve for that child. All you know is what Kate has been drilling into your head all these years. And I... I won't have any more of it. I won't have you moping around and giving me those looks. I'm not giving you any looks! I just want everything to be all right around here for once. I want to be able to talk about Carolyn. And I want to be able to think about her without feeling so guilty inside that... I wish I was up there with her. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It was an accident. She fell off the damn bed. Come on now, come on. I'm sorry that I yelled at you, but... You see what this gets us? Nothing but heartache. I just want to be able to talk about her. I just want to be 
able to remember her with, without having nightmares. Try and come by later, Timmy, okay? Hey, Deb, uh, I just want to remind you that you've been a real good sister to me, okay? I mean, there was plenty of times when if you weren't there, you know what I mean. Yeah. Thanks. Can you come by later when you get off work? Please? We'll see. Christmas, you know? I know. Can't stop thinking about her. I gotta go. Deborah. Okay, please, don't start. You just won't keep pushing it away, don't you? Well, you can't push it away any more than I can. Okay, just tell me this. If Carolyn just fell off the bed, why was there an investigation? Who says there was? Francie. Yeah, and me. And I remember it, too, because we thought Mama was dead. Remember? And then she walks into the funeral. Deborah, don't tell me you don't remember this. Those men wheeling her casket in the back and taking pictures of her. Deborah. Hey, Kate, come on, you're playing our song. Not now. How can you close your eyes to this and go back to Jolene's? How can you even look at her knowing what she did? I don't know what she did. You do, too. You were standing right next to me. I was three years old. How do I know what I saw? She killed our baby sister. 
Come on, Kay. Let go of me. Let go! I can't hold it in anymore. I don't care anymore. She's two years old, Deb. She's just a little kid. Nobody even cares about her. That's not true. Then why aren't we doing something? Why can't we at least just stand up for her? Shh, come on. Oh. 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 I can't. I just can't. I can't hold it in anymore. I can't care about myself anymore. Damn, I'm going crazy. I swear to God. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh, please. God. Come on, just listen to me. It's all right. It's okay. God. You don't have to carry it alone anymore. You don't have to. Oh. I'm going to be with you now. I'm going to be with you now, okay? You just got to tell me what to do. It's all right. Please, please, please. It's okay. It's okay. Please. Please, Kate. It's okay. Hey, Francis, you coming back to bed? Hold your horses. Mama? Me, Mama? How's your father? He sent along his regards. No, hardly. He's got heart problems, he says. Heart problems? Uh. Imagine that. He used to go around with them boxing gloves over his shoulder, choosing out everybody in town. Now he's got heart problems. <laughs> Ain't life perfect. Well, what's on your mind, Deborah? Le leave that. Uh, well, Kay and I was just wondering uh, if you'd send off for Carolyn's medical records. Her medical records now? Yeah, uh, we looked into it and I only released them to you. Well, what do you want them for? We just want to look at them. It's time we knew the truth. The truth? Since when do you care about the truth? You've only been hiding from it for about 40 years. That's not true. I've just been trying to live my own life and mind my own business, but Kay won't let it go. And Now, I'd like to get to the bottom of it once and for all, and all I'm asking from you is your signature. Close that damn thing. All right, fine. You want the truth. I'll sign for anything you want. But I'm warning you, Deborah, and make no mistake about it, if you do find the truth, you ain't gonna find no place to hide anymore. right here in front of me and there's nothing in here about murder now down at the bottom of the death certificate it says cause of death accident yeah i told you to say that now what about her medical records well um nothing more than that as far as i can tell i mean you know it's mainly this medical stuff i can't understand it but well they don't mention homicide or anything okay look first thing we got to do is take him to a doctor see what he says hey, i'm not taking him anywhere now look I did what I said I'd do, and that's it, okay? Deborah, just see what your doctor says. Deborah? Deborah, you still there? 
Yes, I'm still here, and there's nothing to it, okay? I mean, I got the papers right here in front of me. Yeah, and you can't even understand them, you said. Now, there was an investigation into this thing, and it had to start with the doctors. Then why didn't anybody do anything? I don't know why. Because there's nothing to it. Anyway, who's going to give a damn now? Especially about a couple of white trash sobs that's just like us. Look, I'm just going to make copies of these papers and just send them to you, and then that's it. Deborah, come on. No, I mean it. That's it. Um, I gotta go. took off. That's his mother you're talking about, remember? That's a murderer I'm talking about. Medical records say that? I don't know what they say. Never couldn't understand them. How long are you going to go on with this, Kay? As long as it takes. Do you think I like this? I just feel like time's running out. And it is. I used to think sooner or later me and Deborah would get over this. But here I am, still afraid to have kids. Afraid I'm drinking too much, smoking too much. Hey, you're doing all right. I'm not. Well, you're all right with me. Let me buy you a dog or something. I'm not giving up this time, Woody. I'm going to prove what happened if it's the last thing I do. timing. Hey, Bones, DA wants to talk to you when he's through in there. Oh, you know Casey here, his chief assistant? You don't believe I do. Casey Daniels. Randy Goodson. It's nice to meet you. Hey, you got a match there? <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, Casey. Hey, Travis. I'll be with you in a minute. Randy, introduce yourself. I already have. There's one. Hey, Randy, pick up line two, will you? Goodson here. Hello. Is anybody there? Hello, sir? Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? I'm sorry to bother you. Um, but I just called over to the district attorney's office, and, and they said I should talk to you. About what? About an old investigation. See, uh, there were some pictures took. And, well, I was wondering if you folks still had them. Well, what's your name, ma'am? Kay Wilbanks. I'm not asking you to do anything. Um, I, I just like to see those pictures if you still got them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's back up here for one second. Now, what exactly are we talking about here? About the murder of my baby sister, I guess. And when was this? December 5th, 1955. 55? It's almost 40 years ago. I know, I know, and I'm sorry for bothering you with it. But if I could just see those pictures, I'd know I wasn't crazy. What were these pictures of, exactly? I mean, why were they taken? To show all the bruises on her and everything. She was pretty much beaten to death. Look, uh, maybe I better just call over to the DA's office again. Now, can you hang on for a minute? Casey. Miss Daniels. Can you jump on line two for a minute? Ma'am, are you there? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, I got a lady from the DA's office listening in. Now, what did you say your sister's name was again? Carolyn Yvonne Maggard. Well, 
Everything looks fine. Except... If I'm not mistaken, you appear to have a bullet embedded in your chest. Oh, yeah, I do. My old doctor said it was nothing to worry about, though. Old boyfriend shot me. Said it was either me or the dog. Listen, could you do me a favor? These are my my little sister's medical records. Um, it's probably nothing, but my older sister thinks... Well, if you could just look at them and tell me what you think. Sure. done about this? What do you mean? Well, criminally, I mean. Miss Harper, your sister appears to have been beaten to death. Beaten to death? Yes. I just assumed that... Where does it say that? You show me where it says that. Well, in simple terms, all this medical terminology indicates she was covered with bruises, she had two black eyes, and her skull was crushed. Miss Harper, who did this? Do you think we're doing the right thing? I mean, after all this time? Hell, yes, I do. I think it's about the rightest thing we ever done. I wonder what that Detective Goodson's gonna look like. He sounded real nice on the phone. I bet he's about mm, 35, kind of slim, real well. You know, okay, I've been thinking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him everything right off the crack of the bat. You know, about all our drinking and the scrapes we've been in. Well, let's not scare him off. I'm serious. Fine, fine. Why don't you show him your bullet hole while you're at it? I dug up this old aerial photograph here. Look, this is the motel. Here. It is exactly where Kay said it would be. It used to be this old army barracks. Now, I also found Carolyn's grave, and she died in December. Forty years now, ago. I, I know, on, I know. Rich. It's crazy. Just hear me out. Now, when I talked to Kay, she said she remembered something about cotton bales being stacked up across from the motel. Well, look, look at this building here. That is the old Plains Co-op. When did they stack up bales like that, huh? In December. It is exactly the way Kay remembered it. Right, still 40 years ago. Come on, Randy, you're wasting your time with this thing. I think you're going above and beyond the call of duty, chasing us down for these girls. Travis, I got them coming in this afternoon. Travis, let's just hear what they have to say. Okay. In the meantime, I got my hands filled with yesterday's homicides. Much less one that might have happened back in 1955. Now get back to me. I gotta go. Uh, right down the hall. Turn right. sent off for some papers, uh, some kind of papers about Carolyn. I, I'm just sick about it. How well, anyway, uh, I just called to check in with you, see if you're all right. You call me when you get home, okay? Bye. Are you sure Kay didn't tell you what she wanted with this stuff? No, ma'am. It's probably just for her astrology and all that. Goodson. Hey. Nice to finally meet you. Nice meeting you. So, um, I'm sorry to keep you two waiting. I didn't even know you were out here. Did you have a chance on wine? No, we just pulled in. Well, maybe you want to get something to eat, uh, freshen up a bit? Tell you the truth, sir, we just soon get started. We've been waiting for this a long time. Besides, this is about as fresh as we get. Yeah, we'll send somebody
right here? That's where the co-op used to be. And across that lot, on the other side, that's where the Woods Motel was. Okay, as far as those uh, pictures you asked me about, I haven't been able to come up with anything. Well, I also ran a check on uh, Jolaine and Butch, but uh, both their records came up clean. Well, Sarge didn't. You know, everybody's allowed to make some mistakes in their lives, Deborah. But uh, what we're talking about here is murder, right? Now, I'm just wondering, why did you two wait so long before coming forward with all this? Because well, it took this long to get our nerve up, I guess. We never thought anybody would believe us. All I want out of this is Carolyn's forgiveness, Mr. Goodson. That's all I come here for. Yeah, well, I come here to see Jolene Maggard swinging from a damn rope. She was evil, Deborah. in Jolene's room, so I can't tell you how that looked. Well, it's okay, Deborah. Come on. Just do the best you can. I'm not a very good drawer. Well, it's okay. Come on. This is where we slept. On an old fold-down couch. I remember every morning just laying there while Butch and Jolene ate breakfast. All us listening to him and knowing that as soon as he went out that door. If I need a ride, I'll call you. Right. See you tonight. All right, up. Uh, all of you. Let's go. You, you little whore, showing your backside to your daddy. What did I do? What did I do? You knew them covers was off. Now you get in there and do them dishes and scrub that bathroom floor. Deborah, you get this bed made and you dress your little sister. Yes, You're just like your mama, ain't you, you little tramp? You give me that look. You want some more? Huh? Say you want some more. Say it. Look at me, girl. It was like that every morning. You knew you were going to get beat for something, no matter what. We're not doing the dishes fast enough or ironing wrong. Sometimes... Wait a minute. Ironing. You were three years old and you were ironing. I was almost four. I damn sure knew how to do dishes and housework. And it wasn't like Jolene just fly into a rage every time, either. She liked hurting us. You could see it in her eyes. Like the way she'd done Deborah all the time, because Deborah was more sensitive and needed a mother more. How do you mean? Sometimes she'd feed me things that make me sick. What kinds of things? Orange slices with pills hidden in them, laxatives, soap. Why would she do that? Just for the fun of it. 
And of course, when Deborah'd start to gag, she just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. She'd laugh, and just like that. When Deborah tried to spit it out, she'd clamp her hand over Deborah's mouth, smothering her, and yelling at her to swallow it. We knew it was only a matter of time before she killed one of us. We just didn't know it'd be Carolyn. What happened that day? Do you remember? I'm not sure. I want to remember. I really do. But I've been blocking it out for so long. I've been such a coward. No, Deborah. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Now I got it pushed back so far that all I can remember are these little bits and pieces. Like the flamingos on the shower curtain and a baby shoe falling. That's why I want to be hypnotized, Mr. Goodson. So I can get it out in the open and be done with it. And you're completely relaxed. And you can hear the creek gurgling and the wind through the trees. A nice Randy, I just talked to Travis. And? He's just not ready to jump on board yet. He was going on and on about some of the contradictions in the girl's stories. Like, like Kay saying Carolyn's funeral dress was lavender and Deborah saying it was yellow. Oh, come on. I know, but he's the one who'd have to try this case, which is based totally on these girls' memories. Compared to them, Jolene looks like a saint. I mean, no police record. She goes to church every Sunday. How old are you now, Deborah? Deborah, can you hear me? How old are you? I'm playing with Kay and Carolyn. Where are you? Deborah? Here it is, laddies. Aunt Laddies. Good. Good. And you're with your sisters? You're with Kay and Carolyn? Mm hmm That's good. Okay, now we're going to move a little later in the year. Okay, Deborah? It's just before Christmas in 1955. And you're at the Woods Motel. You remember the Woods Motel? Mm -hmm. Deborah, what's wrong? Oh, Deborah? Oh, my hands. What's wrong with your hands, Deborah? What's wrong with them? They sting. She's sticking them. Deborah. De De Deborah. Deborah, can you hear me? Deborah, it's the next day and you're all right. Deborah, you hear me? What is it? Deborah, what's happening? Stop what? Oh. Who won't stop? Oh, Jolene! Oh, Kay! Kay, wait! No, don't go there, Kay! Deborah, where are you? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, she's trying to put her shoe on and, and... Her shoes! Oh, my God, this is when it happened! She's not ready for this!
Debra, you just hang in there, okay? You're gonna be all right. I remember the ride to the hospital now. Debra, stop it. You've remembered enough for a while. I can't help it. I just keep seeing it. Jolene trying to wash the blood off and then the shower curtain kept moving. Debra, stop it. Now listen to me. We've been thinking back long enough. You hear me? Now we've finally got something we can look forward to. We got people who believe in us, Deborah. We got people who are counting on us. Look, you want to remember something. You remember them damn curlers Jolene used to put in my hair? You remember that? The way she'd roll them so tight I could, couldn't hardly close my eyes. You remember? Kind of like that, huh? You remember that? <laughs> when she'd take them out, I'd look like little orphan Annie. <laughs> well, you remember that when you got to think back on those days. Because we're putting the rest of it behind us, sis. Starting today. Now, come on. Let's go to the store and clean out every damn candy bar in the place. My treat. You just had to do this to me, didn't you, Randy? Forty-year-old case. I didn't have too much of a choice, Travis. Well, neither do I now, after seeing this. I'm probably going to regret this. Did you tell these gals this office on board 100%? Yes. But let's not get their hopes up, though. This is a long shot from the get-go, and the last thing I want to do is let these women down again. Now, I'm going to want to talk to both them and their mother. No, I'm not going to talk to him. I ain't having a thing to do with this. Why not? Because it's over and done. Damn it, Francie, don't you do this. I ain't doing nothing. It's in the Lord's hands now, which is where it belongs. Why drag it out now? Oh, you're just afraid it's all going to come out about you, ain't you? Me? I got nothing to be ashamed of. I done everything I could about this, and you know it, too. I took the two of you to the DA's office after the funeral, and what happened? You just sat there. Too yellow to say a word. We was kids. We were scared. Well, you know, you can tell yourself that all you want to, but you can't turn back the clock. What's done is done. What about after that, Mama? After what? After it was all over and Carolyn was in the ground. How could you send us back to Jolene, knowing what she'd done? Now, you wait just a minute here. Were we that bad, Mama? It was not like that. Then what was it? How could you send us back there year after year, even though we begged you not to? You know, I've heard this story about a million times, but I don't remember no such a thing. I remember that you loved Jolene. You still do. Sending her little cards and everything, calling her mom. You never gave a damn about us, did you? That ain't true. Then what is? Just try telling the truth for once in your life so I could stop wasting my time on you. So I could stop pretending you're going to be a mother to me someday. Because that's all I ever really wanted, you know? And I was so desperate for it that I ended up clinging to the woman who killed my baby sister. Let's get out of here. It's been coming for a long, long time. Wait up. Y'all just wait. All right, all right. You made your point. I'll talk to these people if that's what you want. I'll even testify for you. If it ever goes that far, but... There's just one thing we ought to talk about. What's that? Well, I don't want to go in there looking like poor white trash. I mean, I, <clears throat> I should make a good impression, right? She wants a new pair of shoes and a new outfit before she'll meet with y'all. But if she testifies, she wants to get her teeth fixed. Well, we're a long way from the courtroom at this point. I got cookies, too. Oh, this is just fine, thanks. You wow. sure they're homemade? Hot dog. Okay. Good. It's important that you remember that, though. 
We're in the early stages of an investigation here. There's no guarantee that we'll get an indictment, much less a trial. Well, that's all right by me. It's not what I'm doing this for. Well, I am. I want to be there when they throw old Jolene in the clank. I'm, I mean, that's why you're here, right? Well, we're here for two reasons. First is to make sure that we got grounds for that. And the second is to make sure that the DA's office here can prove that in court. And after nearly 40 years, it's... Well, it's not going to be easy. So what's the next step, then? You talk to us and to Francie, and then what? And then we try and track down anybody that was at the hospital on that day. And we're also going to have to exhume the body. You mean Carolyn's body? Oh, yes, ma'am. We have to determine the extent of her injuries. But you already got her records. Well, I know, but there are no x-rays. We've got to have the physical evidence, Deborah. The proof. No. No, no I, don't, I don't like this. Nobody said anything to me about this. Deborah, what difference does it make? It makes a difference to me. There's supposed to be her final resting place out there. It's the only piece she's ever known. Deborah, if we have no body, we have no case. Then you have no case. I'm sorry. Deborah. No, I don't want to talk about it. Oh. Let me talk to her. It'll be all right. You need me to sign that? I think you better talk to Deborah first. I don't need to talk to Deborah. She just takes things real hard sometimes. But when it comes down to it, she'll be there for us, I promise you. Now let me borrow your pen. Listen, I want you to know everything is going just fine. We're being real, real careful with her, Deb. Mr. Kristen, I know this sounds stupid, but I, I... I really don't think that we ought to be doing this right now. Deborah, listen to me. We got no choice here. This is the only way. Look, we, we got to call it quits for tonight anyways. I just, I want you to stay steady, okay? Okay. Okay. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Detective Goodson? Yep. After 35 years, you boys are going to be lucky to find the hinges on that casket, much less a body. Yes, this is my signature, all right. Let's see here. Baby brought to ER. Artificial respirator. Wait a minute. Artificial respiration? You know, I think I do remember this. We had the fire department bring over the iron log. Do you remember anything about the woman that brought her in? 
No, I'm afraid not. Well, what about the little girl herself? I mean, she'd obviously been abused. Now, just a minute. If you're implying that I, that I didn't report... No, 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 please. Don't get me wrong, Dr. Evie. Look, in the first place, she was Dr. Jones' patient. I just confirmed the diagnosis. And in the second place, child abuse wasn't even... I mean, it's not like today. Yes, 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 we know that. There were no laws about it. It was considered a, a family matter back then. I'm afraid that's really all I can tell you. Well, would you know of anyone else that we could talk to? Nurses, uh, assistants, anybody? I wouldn't think so. I imagine they're all dead by now, just like Dr. Jones. totally intact. It's unbelievable. She's still wearing the little lace dress. I'm telling you, it's almost like she has been waiting for us. <laughs> Kay? <laughs> Kay? Uh, Randy, it's Woody. Hey. Can you tell anything yet about her interest? No, it's too soon, but they're rushing over to the university right now. We got one of the best forensic guys in the world working on her. Baby, let me... Hey, Randy. Okay. What color's her dress? We don't know yet. It's completely faded, but we're gonna call in a fibers expert. You can see it right here. This isn't merely a fracture. This is a tear in the child's skull, meaning there was movement at the time of impact rather than just a quick blow. You mean the child was in motion like she was what? Thrown down? Well, I can't say that exactly, but uh, she hit with tremendous force. She also has a broken rib from a previous injury. Doctor, her stepmother claims this happened when she fell off of a bed. Now, what are the chances of that? Zero. The force it would take to cause an injury like this would be... Well, it would be like falling off of a four-story building. Yeah? Ma'am, are you Jolene Maggard? Yes. Could you please step outside here? I have a warrant right here for your arrest. My arrest? What, what for? For the murder of Carolyn Maggard in McKinney, Texas, 1955. Let's go. Wait a minute. Bring her back here. Bring her back. Watch will being silent and not make any statement at all. Any statement you make may be used against you and probably will be used against you at your trial. Any statement you make may be used as evidence against you. She killed the toddler 40 years ago. Her lawyer, Ethan Crane, denounced the arrest, calling his client an innocent grandmother who's being victimized by her two stepdaughters, Kay Wilbanks and Deborah. Hello? Problem. Timmy, it's me. I'm so sorry. How can you even call here? I, di I didn't expect this to happen, I swear to God. Like hell you didn't. You went to the police, you told them all these lies. How can you do this? You destroyed the only family you ever had. Now don't you ever, ever call here again. Timmy, wait. Timmy? Oh, that's uh, what? 67. Deborah. Hey, where have you been? We've been trying to reach you all day. I've been driving all day. I needed to talk to you face to face. Well, sure. Sure. What's wrong, Deborah? I can't do this anymore, Casey. I'm sorry. I, I know the trial's coming up, but I'm just not going to make it. Deborah, don't worry about the trial. Now, come on. Let's go inside. No. No. You just... You just tell Mr. Colton that I... I, I just can't do this. You tell him I'm sorry. Deborah, you got nothing to be sorry about. You've been through hell. We all know that. It's all coming apart. My family, my life. Jo, 
Mr. Link could go to prison, and it's all my fault. Oh, Deborah. And I just keep seeing it. The beatings and the torture. And what Jolie did to Carolyn. And I was too scared. You just hang on, okay? It's gonna be all right. Now, I'm gonna get you some help. No, no. I know a doctor, and she's wonderful, oh. Deborah. No. Deborah, listen to me. Listen. You gotta reach out sometimes. We all do. Now I've got her card right here. Now we're gonna go inside, and I'm gonna call her right now. And I want you to hold on to this card. And I'm gonna write something down on it too, okay? And I want you to remember it. There. <laughs> You promised me. It's true, Deborah. It is, and don't you ever forget it. And in yet another twist in the landmark case, the district attorney confirmed that if Jolene Maggard is convicted, she'd have to be sentenced according to the laws that existed in 1955. But Travis Colton says both he and the sisters are undeterred. Put Randy on, then Kay, then the others. Then we put Deborah up there and just hope she can hang in there. Colton here. What was your name again, ma'am? Henrietta Perkins. On your who again? Are you sure? What was the name of the hospital? H. Perkins. My God, she was a nurse there the night Carolyn died. We thought she was dead. Uh, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. I'm, I'm going to put you on the speakerphone. What's that? I've got you on the speakerphone, ma'am. Now, how is it we missed you? I've been here all along. I'm using my maiden name now. And you sure you remember this little girl? Yes, I am. It was the first case like that I had ever seen. Well, can you tell me what she looked like? What, what color was her hair? Oh, she was just a little angel. The prettiest blonde and the bluest eyes you ever saw. We had that poor child in an iron lung for three hours. And all during that time, that stepmother of hers never shed a tear. You want to tell me what's going on now? Well, I just thought after everything we've been through, and of course with you getting your head examined and all, um, maybe old Francie was right. About what? Had a garage sale. Sold all kinds of junk, you wouldn't believe it. We're going shopping, girl. It's gonna be a whole new you and me. Deborah, why did you Hey, do you feel confident Jolene will be convicted? Tell you, okay. Yeah. All right, folks. We are right on time. Okay, okay. We'll be right in there. I'll meet you inside. Okay. You don't even have to look at her. I want to look at her. Can you tell us what you mean by flashbulb memories, Doctor? Well, extremely vivid memories of traumatic events. They're actually quite common in young children. And how can you distinguish them from regular memories? 
One clue is the way they're remembered. By that I mean, even after the person reaches adulthood, these memories are still seen through the eyes of a child. Then Jolene put me and Deborah in the back seat, and she put Carolyn on the floor below us. I remember driving around for a long time. I didn't know where we were going, but I remember getting down on the floor and whispering to Carolyn, telling her that we loved her, and promising her that if she just didn't die, we was gonna run away. And we would have too. We'd have gone to Aunt Letty's. But I, I never got to keep that promise. I could never lay a hand on a child. Both Kay and Deborah know that. I love those girls. I tried to teach them right from wrong. And do you still love them? Oh, yes, I do. I, mean, I just, just hope that they get some help. And then what happened? Well, I, I uh, left her in there, stuck it on her bottle, and then I went into the next room to finish my chores. And where were Deborah and Kay at this point? Oh, they were in there with her, jumping up and down on the bed. Go on. <sighs> well, after a few minutes, I heard something, like a thump, like something had fell. So I went back in, and, and there was the baby just lying there on the floor. But I am not saying that Kay or Deborah, that, that they pushed her or anything like that. I mean, it was just an accident. The people call Mrs. Henrietta Perkins. There's someone here to see you. Oh, God. Aunt Letty. Oh, oh dear. Oh. <laughs> Miss Harper, uh, you've been called to the stand. You solemnly swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Please be seated. Afternoon, Deborah. Just take a deep breath, okay? And tell us your full name. Deborah Faye Harper. <clears throat> <clears throat> My name is Deborah Faye Harper. Would you like a moment to compose yourself? No, sir. Deborah, let me ask you something point blank here. Why now? Why, after all these years, did you finally... No, strike that. Deborah, do you want to see Jolene Maggard thrown in jail? No. Then why are you doing this after all these years? Because I just couldn't. You couldn't what, Deborah? No, we, we need to hear this. Because I just couldn't live with it anymore. And I keep thinking that if I'd been a little stronger, Carolyn might still be alive. And do you really believe that? Yes, I do. Deborah, as you know, this whole case pretty much rests on the accuracy of your and your sister's memory of what happened back in 1955. Now, Mr. Crane and his experts here 
contend that you couldn't possibly remember all this. Or maybe the two of you just made it up. Did you make it up, Deborah? No. Then how do you explain the differences in your story? <clears throat> like the color of Carolyn's dress at the funeral. A great deal has been made out of that issue. I don't know. I just always remembered it as being yellow. Yellow. And Kay says it was lavender. Yes, sir. Deborah, I was going to save this for my closing arguments because I wanted you and Kay to hear it both at the same time. But I think you need to hear it now. We just got the results back from the FBI laboratory and they ran all the latest tests, fiber analysis and all that. And they have determined that the color of your baby sister's dress was yellow with a lavender trim. Oh. And here it is, Deborah. You and Kay were both right. And you have been right all along. Now, Deborah, I know this is going to be hard. The time has come. Can you tell this court what happened to your baby sister? On December 5th, 1955. Yes, sir. Yes, I can. It happened when we were in the bathroom. Me and Kay. We were scrubbing the floor. And we could hear Carolyn screaming in the front room. Because Jolene was trying to get her shoes on. Oh, And she kept slapping her. Because Carolyn kept curling up her little toes. And then the beat got worse. Deborah, could Kay have done anything to stop Jolie? No. Could you have done anything to stop her? No. But if you had just been a stronger three-year-old... It wouldn't have made any difference. There was nothing I could do. That's right. There was nothing you could do. Mrs. Bagger, Mrs. Bagger, Jolene, did the goopy bird come as a shock? Jolene is That's all I got to say. Two girls, these two girls, this pig. Are you planning to appeal? What are you planning to do now? Is this going to be an appeal? 
here, so I guess I should start. <clears throat> Me and Deborah wrote this out, so I wouldn't forget anything. Carolyn, we love you, honey, and we've always loved you, but just, we never had a chance to say goodbye. Thanks to all these people here, people you never even knew, we got that chance now. Now we can remember some of the happy times. Being out at Aunt Letty's, eating peaches, putting your little feet on mine, and the three of us dancing around and around. I just wish I could hear you laugh again. You were so beautiful. Deborah and I know you shine even brighter where you are. We promise that we'll always respect human life and hold to the dream that someday things will be better for everyone. Time to let you go. Honey, please save Deborah and I a place up there beside you. And a hug and a giggle, too. And we'll see you someday. Never forget that we love you. <laughs> 